Talking with Topher is sponsored by slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com, New Hampshire Vape Gallery, and naturalbossnh.com. More on that later. Let's get into episode 92. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. Talking with Topher. What is happening, TWT fans? I am so glad to be back. It's 2022, and this is the first episode of the new year. I am so excited because I have got a great interview for all of you out there. That's right. But before I get into all of that, I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. It really does keep me coming back here week after week. All of you do so much sharing, rating, reviewing, and commenting. I just want to say thank you. I I just can't thank you enough, I don't think. Um, If you're new to the podcast, that's right. You new? You're not subscribing? Whether you're watching, listening, whatever you're doing, hit that subscribe button. It's the most important thing you can do. It means nothing to you and everything to me. Uh, If you want to do more, you can set the alarm so you know when all the new podcasts upload. You can share, rate, review, and always give a thumbs up for the video. That helps tremendously. So do comments. All of it helps the podcast grow, and I need your help to be doing it. If you want to get more involved with the podcast, maybe you want to get some free slowdown merch, this is how you do it. Put slowdown in the subject line of the email that you're going to send over to T-A-L-K-I-N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. And uh, just put your story or someone's story that you think needs to be heard in that email. I pick it out. I read it. I get you on the podcast. Whatever happens, you get the opportunity to get some free slow down merch. So put slow down in the subject line and then send that over to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. And I'm on social media. Who isn't these days, right? Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. Um, I'm on there every week, almost all week giving you some extra content throughout the week. Again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I always appreciate the follow. And now with all of that out of the way, let's get into today's episode. That's right. This one is a little bit different than most. I'll be honest with you. I was very nervous doing this. I was very excited. And a little bit of my uh, fandom came out. Okay. Yeah, I'm a fan, right? And I couldn't help but show it. And, uh, yeah, so I did my best. I got, I had a lot of fun with Rick. He took time out of his day. He came over on Sunday, January 2nd, and we recorded, uh, this. So I'm very excited to, uh, share it it with you. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed doing it, but this was so much fun for me. So much fun, in matter of fact, that I don't even want to waste your time babbling on and on. So, without further ado, my guest, Rick Hahn. All right, well, today, uh, my guest today is a very important person in my life. Besides being an Olympian, an MMA fighter, and a teacher, he is someone I consider a friend. Everybody, Rick Genghis Hahn. And... Before we start, go ahead and plug, promote, anything you want. Um, got me on the spot here. I don't, I don't really know. Um, yeah, I have my, my school. My gym is uh-huh. in um, Plastown, New Hampshire. All right. So I teach a little bit of the, all the martial arts there. Um, uh, I'm sponsored by Fuji Sports. One of, uh. one of my sponsors and good friends uh, owns that. And uh, So if you ever need any uh, sparring equipment or martial arts equipment, jujitsu geese, uh, anything like that, Hit me up. I can get you a discount. Okay. Um, are you on Instagram, Twitter, any of those as well? Yeah, no more Twitter. Uh, uh, no more Twitter. That's like everybody. I, I forget, actually forgot my password. I don't even know how to get in uh, that anymore. Uh, I used to have <laughs> Sorry, to Sorry, it's that. useless. Yeah, and I, have yeah, to, yeah. I didn't really like it, but I had to use it for when I was fighting. Everything was like they did that a lot on Twitter with that. All right. that's so, I, I'll put your handles at the bottom. We can, yeah, I can Facebook take care. and Instagram, I want. Facebook yeah. and Instagram, I will definitely put those handles at the bottom of the screen there, and I'll put everything you've plugged and promoted 
and links in the bottom of the description of the uh, video. I'll take care of all that. Um, so let's see here. You, uh, where, where, where did everything start for you? Like, uh, I looked into a few things, um, and it just said that you were born in Chicago, Chicago, Illinois, and stuff like that. Um, but how did you get to the point where you mm. knew that you wanted to do uh, judo in the Olympics? How, how did uh, how did that start? What was uh, what was it like growing up in Illinois? Did you do a lot of moving around or right? So uh, I didn't actually grow up in in, in Chicago. My uh, all my family and relatives are from Chicago, the South Side. Um, so it's not the best uh, place to be, <laughs> South Side <laughs> Chicago. So uh, my dad and my mom they they moved to Oregon when we when I was two. Oh okay. So I, n- I never grew up there. I went back you know now and again to visit family. Um, but uh. Yeah, so I grew up in Oregon, and um, my dad had did judo uh, back in, before I think I was born in Chicago. He'd stopped for a while, and then when I turned 12, he wanted to get me involved with it because it was, you know, he, he saw the benefits that it could it could, it could have. So um, that's kind of how, that's when I started my, my kind of my path onto that. And after a couple of years of doing that, I, I think I rewatched the Olympics on TV, mm-hmm. and I found out judo was an Olympic sport, and... It was my passion at the time, and you know, middle school, high school, all that. And I, at that point, I decided I wanted to progress and, and, and take it as far as I could. Oh, all right. So, when when all that's going on, and now what? You graduated in '96. Yeah. Okay. Um. So when you graduated and you went to the Olympics, it. Why does it take eight years to? qualify is that like is that normal i'm i don't know anything about the olympics no i just i wasn't ready at the time right? okay so i didn't um so after high school i moved to colorado which was the olympic training center which is the like the the biggest at the time the biggest the, well there's so there's a couple places that you could go for your training uh one was san jose state university um but you have to go to school there and i, I wasn't really keen on going to, to school or college at the time so, um, and then the other place was the, the Olympic Training Center, which is uh, in Colorado Springs. So, and that's like a big, uh, it's an old uh, 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 military base mm-hmm. that they converted into like, it's basically like a city, a small city. It's all gated, heavy security, um, and they have all the, a lot of the Olympic sports there. The people that are Olympians or getting ready to become Olympians. Oh, wow. So, we're surrounded by like wrestlers, you know. The men's gymnastics, volleyball players, weightlifters, um, you know, a bunch of swimmers, all kinds of, you know, all those, you know. Uh, so, so in today's, uh, uh, I guess, wording, is that it, it's like a bubble. Yeah. Like you guys are in this bubble. You're not allowed to leave the bubble, but inside the bubble, you have everything you need. Yeah. I mean, you could leave, right? I mean, it's just, that's just where you, where you live. Right? So, oh, it's just where so you live. So all your okay. training facilities, medical, uh, sports, psychology, cafeteria living quarters everything's all in in this little area huh um, so what, what was that like on like a day-to-day basis like very strenuous workouts long days yeah i mean it was, it was normal right it, it was normal life like you, you either had to go to school or work with your training you couldn't just you know um and everything was free it was paid for right so it was oh, okay it was a like scholarship. a scholarship right oh okay so you at my time you had to you had to qualify to get into that position so I, I was like I thought I was still in high school I think or maybe I just graduated but I had to qualify and get you know I had a medal I think at a couple of national events to have enough points to be like all right you're you're uh, uh you know you're a, a candidate you're up and qual- you're qualified you're qualified you're you know you have potential basically um so that afforded me the the spot and then you know just move there oh yeah. And then so you move there, you get into it, and then is it is it eight years? No. Or what 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 held you back from making the? Uh, is there a timeline? How do, how yeah, does it work? I, I just wasn't good. Okay, I wasn't good enough yet. <laughs> uh, so I I moved. I got I'm, there in ninety six. The um, fact that you're there is something yeah, for but, sure. But, I mean, that's just the the training center. Like, okay, you know, a lot of people go there and they could be just be bums, but you know they. They're trying. Yeah. I mean, okay. 
there there were times we had people that were they weren't you know the qualifying system to get in wasn't as strenuous for our sport as it years past so people would just show up because like you know it was basically kind of a waste of time uh, but they could be there you know until they you know you know a couple years at least maybe and, and they kind of see where they went so you had to maintain like a high level status you had to be improving um and the way it works so the olympics are every four years okay right yes and depending on your sport how you qualify for the olympics is uh is different right? oh okay so for us, you not only you have to be the number one in your country, but you also have to be the top in the men's. You had to be the top six in the Pan American countries, Pan American oh. Union. Hmm. Um, if you don't qualify your weight in the Pan Am Union, your spot doesn't go to the Olympics. Oh, right? so you okay. have to qualify that weight division because only one weight division, one person can go per weight division. So oh, there, okay. Seven men weight division, seven women. Um, so if you don't qualify that way, you could be the number one in your country and be good, but s- you didn't qualify that division. You're not going to the Olympics. Oh, so, I see. um, so that, you know, and then there are certain points and there are tournaments that go, gave you points leading up to that, to become the number one in your, in your country, number one in the Pan Am union. Um, and then that's how you get, get to go. Oh. And then in my, in my round in, I didn't make two thousand. I didn't make ninety six. I was I was too early. I was too young. Right. Um, two thousand came around. I had a good chance. I didn't make two thousand. I uh, still wasn't ready yet. And then two thousand four cycle came around, and that's when uh, that's when I made it. Okay, so during these eight years, though, you're getting a college education as well, right? You're getting a college some pe- education. Some people, yes. Some people, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you went to college, yes. I didn't. I. I. I I like I wasn't big on school, so I was like, you know, I'll just work. I'll go to school after my 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 time in training. Um, I was like, there's always time for school, right? You can do that. I want to focus everything on my my athletics right now. Oh, okay. So you were doing more work, yeah, and athletics, right, in the place that you needed to be at, right. And then you make it in 2004, and and how does how does that go for you? Like, uh, 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 how. Where did you go? What was the Olympics like in 2004? Um, yeah, so uh, I made the team. So we had Olympic trials. All right. Uh, once your weight quali- your your weight class is qualified, so now you have to ha- now you have to figure out who's going to go to the Olympics. So we have Olympic trials. So the top five, or, yeah, I think it's top five in your weight class do the Olympic trials, like a fight off. Oh. So there's a there, there was a this was in San Jose. Um, and uh, so you, you match up. I was actually ranked number one going into the Olympic trials, which gives you the best opportunity. Oh, because okay. they have to beat you. The, whoever, if they, if you lose, they have to beat you three times at the Olympic trials. So you have very good odds of, of making the team because you're ready number one. You know, I the year before I placed in the at the Korean Open, which is a A level tournament, very very hard. I took bronze, um, which gave me an A level, which was you know I was way uh, next level above the next person below me. So I was the number one seed. So, oh wow! I, I basically had I had two matches and I made the Olympic trials. I won. Oh, that's you know. awesome! Yeah. So one was uh, against my teammate at the time, my first match, and then uh, then my next match was against this guy who had I had fought over the years, and finally he beat me several times, and I finally turned it around. Turned it around on him before the Olympic trials, and then I pretty much dominated him, and that's how I made the team. Oh wow, yeah. that's that's amazing. Yeah. So it can it's 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 there's a lot of pressure, right? Because you're yeah. training, you're training your whole life, you have this tournament basically, and you could have an off day and you screw up and you're not going, right? Yeah. So it's it's there's a lot of pressure on that because everything's riding on that one thing. No matter what you've done prior to that, leading up to that, if you don't if you don't win, it's over. So over, you let your whole team down. Not, it's not no, really. It's not not, not you, I mean, your team, yes, but I mean, it's not like a. The team's not really affected by it's. It's your. It's yours. It's yours. Yeah. So you're, so in your sport, it's yeah. basically you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So and because you, it's, you you do have a team, yes, t- you know that you train with, but you know they're they're not affected by you winning or losing. Oh, not okay. Like, not like soccer and correct. all these other things that right. go on at the Olympics. It's a little bit more individualized. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So while you're doing all of this, what what are the, like we, I feel like back then they didn't have the same 
regiments of like food and diets and stuff like that. So even though it was possibly restricted, what was it anything close to what we're doing today? Like the, the keto thing and the, you know, the, all the diets that we have today that work for some and not for others. But like, yep. what was it like? Uh, uh, what was your diet like back then? Just um, for me, I wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, obviously the, all those diets and little things were, were available and, and around. Um, and while I was at the Olympic training center, I mean, you have nutritionists that you're at okay. your availability. Um, but I wasn't really like in anything, you know, specific, nothing just, specific. You know, yeah, we're just eat healthy, but you were you know. dealing with a nutritionist who was prep prepping your meals. Eh, not so much. I mean, it's just like, let's say you have a cafeteria you can pick whatever you want to eat. Oh, right. You, they have ice cream there. They have, you know, Oh, okay. Stuff, so. Yeah, uh, it's basically that is not what I imagined at all. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it it's that would I think would be more like China or something like that or Russia where they're like, this is what you eat and this is all you're eating. Oh, uh, OK. It, it, I mean, it was, you know, because everyone has different if you're all a bunch of people living together, everyone's going to have a little bit different type of uh, diet or regimen. Right. Well, that's where right. I figured the nutritionist would come in, yeah. and yeah, I mean you know. everything that they're making is fairly healthy, right? They're not, right. They're not giving you, you they're know, not giving you McDonald's. No, um, but again, there's you have choices. You have salads. You have steak. You know they mix it up, so it's kind of like up to you what what you're trying to do. Oh. So it's more specific of of what you you know needed to, you know. Now, now when you qualified at your weight class. Uh, I believe I read it was like 155, no? 178. 178? Yeah, which is 81 kilograms. That was for judo. Oh, that's for judo. 155 was for the MMA fighting. Oh, all right. Yeah. There's my brain again. Um, so when when you when you qualified at that weight, was that what's your what's your natural weight? Was your natural weight 178 or did you work up to 178? No, so obviously you you not obviously, but you want to be uh, as heavy as you can. You want to be at the top of your weight class. So my weight class is 178 and below. Hmm. So I walked around at the time about 183. Oh, wow. Right? Okay. So I was only a couple pounds over. So my weight, I didn't have to cut weight, um, much weight. Like some people would cut more weight. Yeah. You know, because they're. they're you know, well, you hear about it all the time. Right. In sports in general. And, and with our sport, you, you don't have like a window like some other sports like boxing or MMA where you have like a 24-hour window. A thirty-six hour window from weigh-ins to fight time. Judo, you weighed in, in the morning and then you fought a couple hours later. Oh, really? So you didn't have a long period to recover if you cut a bunch of weight, right? So you had to, you know, if you didn't cut much weight at all, well then you're fine and you felt normal. Oh, so interesting. That, that, that made it obviously, you know, if you know that that plays a big role. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's so interesting to me. All, all the Olympics in general is is just like you, you know it's our top top athletes. So to be sitting across from one is just amazing. Um, but so when you when you are doing all of this and um, you what did you end up um, what did you end up gaining from all this? Like what did you win? Where, what places did you come in in two thousand four? What was what was happening there? Um, I didn't win anything really. I mean, with with our, my sport, you basically go in debt. Oh, yeah. So um, it's just it's very expensive, and it's way more expensive now um, than in my day. Because judo, have, yeah. judo is super expensive. Well, the, you have to travel. You, oh, you have the to compete, traveling. Right? So okay, you got to travel all over the world to compete to get enough points to qualify. So. Um, and, and there's not a lot of tournaments like the big tournaments aren't in the U.S. They're all in Europe and Asia. Oh, OK. Right? Yeah, aren't, that's those expensive. Aren't cheap trips, no, right? those are not. cheap. Um, you know, so there, you know, during my competition, they had like the European tour, which was like, I don't know, like eight weeks or, or something like that. Ten, twelve weeks of tournaments every week in every different country. So you do a tournament and then in between the two tournaments, there would be uh, a training camp. So you do a training camp and. and fill the time and then you go to the next country and do a tournament there. Oh. So sometimes you'd I'd be you know go to Europe for five, six weeks, some people you know, and then do a so couple, couple tournaments. Basically you were working to pay to be capable of doing this. Right. Oh wow. And obviously, you know, I, I had a lot of huge support from my parents. They helped out a lot and oh. try to get a little bit of sponsorship when you could. Um this was, you know, it was it was tough. It was very difficult. So um, you know, you you could if if you were, had more money you could obviously get get to more places. Oh, um, 
And, but now it's actually worse because they changed the qualifying system. You have to be ranked, I think, top 20 in the world in your weight class. So there's no more Pan Am Union qualifying. You have to be top 20 in your weight class in the entire world. What is the what is the Pan Am then? What 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 was what was that? That was just they have the Pan American countries, you know, Pan Am Union. So that I saw I saw sorry to cut you off, sorry. but I saw that you won like two medals in that. Yep, a, a few, yeah. So they had Pan Am Games, then Pan Am Championships. Oh. Um, so they still have those, but they're they're not, and they count towards your points overall now. But now you have to be now it's a world ranking as opposed to. Uh, uh, like country. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah. So they changed the ranking system. Right, the, your qualifying system. Oh, your right. qualifying system in right. order to get you in there. Yeah, now now it's like that. Okay, so when you went into the Olympics and you... Technically, it was a little bit easier to get in. It was a little bit easier that's, for you. That's They didn't have that system in place that they do now. But the, the two medals for Pan Am, and then there was three medals... For something else that was all part of qualifying, yeah. There's there's all kinds of tournaments that qualify for it. <clears throat> oh. So you're you know, um, there's really no state tournaments, no tournaments in the states that qualify towards that, um, except for like the U.S. Open, I think would count as one. But yeah, so it was more like the big, like the the the, the big the big tournaments, like the A level tournaments of the you know, like the Paris Open or German Open, things like that. That was. Oh, wow. So yeah. when you finished out your 2004 Olympics, what place were you in? What, how did it go for you so, when you finally competed? Yeah, so I, uh, the Olympics were in Greece, in Athens, Greece. Oh, wow. It must have been beautiful. It was, it was awesome because, I mean, that's the birthplace of the Olympics. Okay. So yeah, to, to, yeah, yeah, to yeah. be able to go back and, and you know, my, my first Olympics was in, like, the birthplace of, of the Olympics was, was awesome. Um. And, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a, a crazy, I mean, it's a huge event. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. The size, uh, it's, you know, the Olympics, it's the biggest event in the world. Yeah. Right. So, um, you know, there's, they, they literally, Greece was, from my understanding, was kind of like a third world country, uh, um, before that. So they had to build, redo the whole city in preparation for that. Like they made a subway system. There wasn't a subway before they made highways, they made roads. They made cities. Just for this. Just for the Olympics. So, Holy shit. like, we're driving around and and like we had a cab a taxi driver and he didn't know the streets we're talking about because they had just been built. Oh right? wow! So, the, um, stadiums, all the stuff they had to build for this event, um, which is all brand new. And you know, so you're at the Olympic Village, which holds ten thousand athletes, something like that. Ten thousand uh, athletes. Right, because that's the world. The, all the Ooh. all the whole sports. Most of the athletes were there. Um, so basically, it's a huge city. Like they, yeah. they built like just apartment complexes and it's around this whole city, and they have you know huge cafeteria, several cafeterias, and that's where you stay while you're uh, getting ready to compete. Oh wow, so, that's incredible! Uh, I ended up I fought the third day, so it was cool. I got to go to the Olympic, the open ceremonies, which was a huge, huge event. Obviously, um, you know you're, you're you're waiting in line. Your country walks out. You go into the the uh, the main stadium which holds like 80,000 people it was packed and uh I, I have it I gotta I gotta bring it I gotta get it on I have it on video I had a cam camcorder in my yeah. hand so I was filming it as I was walking into the stadium which was you know you walk in there also there's 80,000 people screaming it was uh it was it was pretty amazing that must so, have been so intense yeah I had I had to get it on like a, a cd because it's on like a high eight Oh, okay, yeah, okay. VHS, little VHS thing. It's on a little VHS. Yeah. Yeah, I got converted. What we, what we used to do in the old days. <laughs> yes, um, yes. So oh, trust me, I know about that. Yeah. Yes. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll get, I'm going to get that because it's pretty cool to see. I haven't seen it in, I don't know, like 20 years. So. All right. Well, uh, I'll, I'll, well I'll try to help you with that if yeah, I can. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, so I felt like th the fourth day, third day, I think it was third day. Um, I ended up taking, I went two and two. I won two and I lost two. Okay. Um. Better than anyone thought I would do. Any better than I thought I would do. Oh. Um, and I ended up finishing ninth place. Um, so top 10, uh, not so bad. Out of 30, there's only 32 competitors in my weight class. You were number nine. So, yeah. I mean, obviously that was the way it fell, the, how the brackets fell. and the, you know, But still, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. So but, after all this is done and you've now you're going back to Colorado to train again for the 2000 
eight. You're right. So I was going to. Um, you were going well, to. Well, I wasn't oh. sure what I was going to do. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of drama going on with uh, the, our, the Olympic Center and all that at the time. And, you know, we're actually losing the program. The program got cut. Oh. Uh, um, because okay. we weren't producing medals. So oh, if you're not producing medals, then they're going to they be like, cut we'll, you. we'll bring someone else in. Right. So, and I had already planned on going back home anyways, or retiring. I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Oh. I just kind of had my fill of it. I was like, eh, I'm done. Done this a long time. Um, so I moved back to Oregon um, in the fall of 2004. Wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then I decided, you know, like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to try to make another run 2008. But if I'm going to do that, I can move out to Boston and I got training with, with Jimmy Pedro. Okay. Because he was my teammate in 2004. Um, two times bronze medalist, bronze medalist, world champion. Um, very, very, you know, like he's a good friend, uh, but also like one of the best coaches out there. So I was like, if I'm going to do that, I'm going to move out and train with the best person that that's in the country. Oh, wow. So All in right. 2005, I moved out here. You moved out here to yeah. Boston. Yeah. Okay. And then you worked with him and what happened to keep you from qualifying this time? Uh, were you just not into it? No, no, no. I was like, like training with them is, is pretty, int- the hardest training I've ever done in my life. Like, oh, okay. It was way harder than the training, previous training before that. Um, uh, they're just, they're, this is a different level. Um, I went up a weight class as well. Oh. So I was, I was fighting in a weight class that I was too small for. I was fighting at 90 kilograms. Which as is. As opposed to 81, which was 189. Okay. And I didn't weigh 189. I weighed about 185. Oh, all and right. Then I'm fighting guys that are cutting down maybe 10, 15 pounds. So I'm, um, you know, I was just way undersized for that weight class. All right. So you're trying to get up to something that might have been a little bit un- unachievable for you, where you got guys that are heavier than that coming down that size. Right. So they're like energetic. They're yeah, this is bigger. It's, it's inter- a, internationally like I was, I was flipped. right. I was ranked pretty. Right. I was ranked number two, I think, in the states. But Europe, I was just way too small. Hmm. Um, but long story short, uh, we had Olympic trials again and. Uh, I didn't make it. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it was. So after that happens, and you get, uh, you try it again, and it doesn't work. Now you are thinking about getting into MMA. You've already kind of shifted in that direction while you were. So nope. when you were doing Olympics, it was all Olympics, right? And when you didn't qualify, then you started to make a life decision, right? So at the time, let's see, 2008, I was like 31 years old um and i've always been an mma fan and mm. i was always you know i was you know, i watched it from day one from the early days and the, you know uh early 90s and stuff like that and oh okay and uh and i always told myself if i was still young enough that i would try to do it right because i mean the similarities in a lot of it jujitsu judo were very very similar um and there were other people that did judo that were very successful in mma at the time you know, in those early days, and I was like, "Well, why couldn't I be? Why, why not?" You know, that was my thought process. If they could do it, I could do it. There's right, right. So, um, <clears throat> and uh, and technically, my judo career was a little bit, I, I progressed a little bit higher than they did. So I was like, "There's no way. Why wouldn't I be successful in MMA then if I just put my mind to it and did it?" Mm-hmm. So I wasn't exactly young, like 31, 32, starting. Okay. So in 2008. I was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna see. Let me give it a shot." And um, that's how that started. Wow. Second, second career. Second career, MMA. Now, what is, what, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, what's the, what's the place that you're fighting for? I think it was like CFF something. What, what was that? What, what did that stand for? Cause there, there was a couple fights in the beginning where it was CF something. CFX. CFX. That yeah. was it. So that's, that's like a, that's a company name like UFC or Bellator. Yeah, I just it's never just local, heard of them. It's a local. Sh- it was a local show at the time. Oh, it was a local so there, show. There was a, it's like a combat zone, right? And that's the one in Worcester, Mass. No, no, um, I got something mixed up. Sorry. Yeah, no. So my first fight was in Worcester. Oh, okay. Right. So, yep. Um, but uh, yeah. So they have a bunch of little organizations that hold fights, like the Combat Zone does. Yes. And, and tight the Cage Titans now, um, but at the time it was CFX. It was, and and that's who I was fighting for early on. There, there's a couple. There's a couple of shows in that in that beginning stage that that I fought for. 
Okay. So you do a bunch of local fights, and again, you're trying to get ranked, and you're trying to get noticed by the big, the big, the big show, which is UFC or Bellator. So. Oh, so so you, that's why you did those couple fights. Uh, or there was like there was uh, uh what was it? Did I see five or six fights before you got into Bellator. Yeah. So um, I think eight fights. Eight fights? Eight fights. Okay. So, yeah. It, basically, I was just trying to get experience. Like, I, I had never done any kind of boxing or kickboxing before I started fighting. So, I had to learn that. Okay. Like, my takedowns and ground game was, was judo was pretty, very similar. I had to learn some jujitsu, obviously, because uh, my ground game was, was decent, but it wasn't, like, uh, what I needed to do or oh. needed to learn, I should say. So I had to learn jujitsu specific. I had to learn kickboxing, wrestling, uh, even though I wrestled in high school a little bit, but uh, more, practice more of it, right? And it, so. I hate, uh, sorry to cut you off again, right. but it, when you're when you're training for this, are you still working with the guy that was helping you with the Olympics, or who are um, you who are you working with to uh, better your skills at right. this point? So I'm going around a lot of different places. So okay. Um, I was training uh, uh, jujitsu in Derry. Oh, that's where I started doing that. Oh, okay. Um, um, with Tim and and other with people. Tim and everybody. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that that's where I started in two thousand. Yeah, I think two thousand nine, something like that, around because oh. I needed to learn some jujitsu, um, and uh, I was doing my Muay Thai down at at City Atong in Boston. Okay. Um and. Jimmy Pedro actually was my was my manager at the time, like my my, my judo coach. He goes yeah. from my judo coach to being helping me out, like kind of being my manager because he had a lot of connections in the martial arts. Oh, world. that's awesome! Um, so yeah, he was at my manager first, my first manager at the time, kind of helped me out, kind of helped you out, yeah. worked it worked with everything. That's that's just it, it's in, it's incredible, dude. Like just just all the. Uh, just the hard work that has that goes into that, you know, everything. I mean, those being in the Olympics is not easy at all. But you're right. If you if you think you can do it, why not give it a shot? But yeah. the same goes with MMA. I mean, you put your body and everything through such strenuous. So it's really good that you had such a, a good bunch of people behind you. And right. I didn't realize that that's when you started at uh tim school right so that's pretty that's 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 a fun fact for me yeah um so when you get into bellator and you start having all these fights and you're going through everything um i i noticed that it's, correct me if i'm wrong but it said that you had uh 25 total fights with only four losses so when when you were getting close to uh, the end of the career in fighting, which was 2011, is that correct, or am I off again? 2015. Yes, my last fight. Is, I think. 2015. Right, 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 right. Yeah, this is me going to paperwork. Uh, yeah, yeah. 2015. Uh, you ended up winning that fight. Yeah. So my question is: is if you were winning, why did you why did you stop? Does it hurt? Okay, yeah, that's that, that that's a fair answer. Slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. That's slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com. Not sure how to spell that. It's right here at the bottom of the screen, right there. All right, it's also in the description below the video. But these guys have everything. They got hats. They got leggings. They got sweatshirts, sweatpants, embroidered hats, skateboards. I mean, you looking for it with amazing colors and tattoo designs. You're going to find it here at Slowdown. I just love everything that they have. Uh, I'm a giant fan of all their stuff. Their T-shirts are one of my favorites. They last wash after wash. The prints are amazing. The embroidering is high quality. Their sweatshirts are super thick. It's a great place to get all of the great products that you're looking for this winter slowdownclothing.bigcartel.com that's where you're going to get this stuff you're not sure how to spell that it's right here at the bottom of the screen or in the description in the video below new hampshire vape gallery is located at 180 lafayette road seabrook new hampshire down the street from home depot and next to smoke ring where we're open seven days a week from 10 30 to 8 p.m 
You can shop inside our store and feel free to give us a call 603-814-4171. We've just got it all. We've got all your juices, your flavored juices, your devices, your box mods, your 510 cartridge batteries. Yeah, we got those. Escobar for disposables. And now they just came out with a 5,000 puff for 35 bucks and it's rechargeable. What? Yeah, that's right. Best disposables on the market just came out with a 5,000 puff rechargeable. What about CBD? What about Kana? I got it. You need THO, THP, uh, HHC. All of it is in stock today. And if it's not, it's on the way. You know what I'm saying? We are just getting more and more and more. At New Hampshire Vape Gallery, located in Seabrook, New Hampshire, 180 Lafayette Road, down the street from Home Depot and next to Smoke Ring, where we're open seven days a week from 1030 to 8 p.m. And you can always give us a call, 603-814-4171, naturalbossnh.com. That's N-A-T-U-R-A-L-B-O-S-S-N-H. Dot com. I love this website. I love supporting small business, and that's exactly what you'll be doing when you order from Natural Boss. Yes, you're supporting small business, and they've got some great products to do it with. Do you have a beard that needs help? Well, get the beard oil. The beard oil is going to give it that help. Um, they got salve. That's great for dry skin. They've got a brand new roasted cacao body bomb. Yeah, put that on your skin. They also got the lip care balm. That's great for your lips to keep them uh, moist and from cracking to protect us from this cold, long winter we're going to have. Oh, my. I love the lip balm. It makes my lips feel so nice. Um, they've also got some Feeling Rosy Holiday Soak left over. So you can still get a couple of these holiday items. I'd grab them before they're absolutely gone. And then, of course, they still have their foot and body soak. That's right. These Five amazing products, plus one special one, are still available today. Going to naturalbossnh.com today and buying one or all five of these products. Yeah. So I at my last fight, so I was cut from Bellator in 2014. Okay. Um, I think I I think I had 14 fights for Bellator, and I lost like 10 and 4 in Bellator, I think. I mean, maybe something like that, around there. Um so I had a I wasn't sure what I was gonna do right because the Bellator paychecks were pretty big, pretty good sized belt checks, and then you're you're cut and you're like, well, now you gotta try to get back into Bellator or UFC. So you're back to the the local shows. Oh, so you know that's not the, not the same. You gotta work build yourself back up. Um and um, so I did a couple local fights. Um, trying to get I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do. I was like, I'm I'm, I'm you know I'm getting older. That's why it hurts so much. Like the training is just I'm. You know, late thirties at the time, so it's a little too little old to be fighting at that level. And yes, it just it just hurts. It's just it's hard. I'm you know I'm working full time and stuff like that. So, um, I I got signed on by uh, a Titan FC, Titan Fighting Championships. So, um, they gave me an opportunity to fight for the title. I I won one of their fights or two of their fights, and they're like, I will right, we'll give you a shot at the title, the one fifty five title. Um, against a former UFC UFC guy who was very experienced, he had like sixty fights. Oh wow! Yeah, so and he was he was good in the UFC. He was his name was Pat Healy. So um, so I was like, All right, I'm gonna make this my last fight, win or lose. It's for the belt, you know. Um, I had fought for a couple of belts before in Bellator, and I, I didn't win. But I was like, this is gonna be my last fight, win or lose, because I just I'm like I was almost on thirty like thirty nine, I think at the time, um, or I just turned thirty nine. So that was that was it. And that was just it. Yeah. You were like, I'm, ju I'm just done with this. So yeah. from from here, uh, when when you say I'm done, and now you're you're working, uh, which what is work right now? Like so work was now or like, like not now, at but that time. then at that time when you were like, I'm done with MMA. Yeah. Well, you're just working full time right now trying to yeah, figure so things I out. Was, I was working. Um, I was, I was teaching, uh, at Tim school. Oh, okay. Uh, in, so, in Dario. so I was, I was, so we went, well, let's kind of go back a little bit. So when I got cut from Bellator, uh, uh, my last fight that I'd lost at Bellator, I wasn't cut yet, but 
um, I remember sitting with uh, with Tim and we're at some Iowa or some small town in Iowa at the at the bar having dinner or something like that, and we talked about opening up a school together. So I was like, yeah, because that was kind of like a, what my goal was. You know, uh, when I started kind of doing fighting, I was like, I want to open up a school later on in life, if I can. Yes. You know, okay. I was, I was like, that's, you know, kind of maybe it started early on before in my judo career. Like, maybe I'll open up a school when I'm older. Oh, um, you've all, you've, so you've always had this passion for opening up a school. Right, right, oh. exactly. So, okay. And, and through my, my training all three years, I've, I've trained at some of the best places in, in the world and in, in the country as well uh, and trained with some of the best – martial arts instructor so i had a lot of knowledge i had a lot of experience with high level athletes as well training alongside those guys so um we thought it'd be a good idea tim and i to open up a school together and that was kind of like all right we got to get ready for that we got to train he's got to i have to learn how to teach Mm -hmm. how to operate a school things like that so i did a lot of you know leading up to my last fight i was training working at the teaching at the dairy school teaching, learning how to teach, teaching some classes. So you were actually teaching while you were fighting. Right. And yep. then when you were done fighting, it was all in on yeah. teaching. Right. And then it was kind of like a, a smooth transition where then I got my location for my school in 2016. Right. Because yeah. you were always teaching at Tim's because when I started, uh, you were a brown belt. Yeah. And I've actually watched you become a professor and work with you myself many times at your school, but right. you were all in at teaching at Tim's yeah. after your last fight in 2015 from MMA. Yeah. yeah, so even before that, I was I was teaching. I was learning how to you know, you know, teach classes, the different class. I had to learn. I had to learn karate, right? Because I didn't <laughs> know karate, so that's our school teaches karate. And, so when um, you become a teacher, you just have to learn it all. You yeah, to, unless, you have to unless, learn you, how... unless you already know those things, right? right. So I, I knew Muay Thai or kickboxing and stuff, but again. Knowing it and teaching it are two different things, right? Right, yeah. Or, or being a good instructor are two different things, right? So a lot of people are very, very great athletes and martial artists, but they're not very good teachers and, and vice versa, right? So you gotta, you have to know how to be a, a, an effective and efficient teacher. Um, so, you know, and I also learned that when I was training with Jimmy Pedro because he's obviously he's a very high level and, and um, that we actually took classes on how to become better teachers. So oh, that was, wow. you know, very, very important in, in, in the training. So there's classes on how to be better teachers, too? Well, like, we held classes together. Like, you know, oh. we worked on things together, and, and we, you know, rated each other and judged and practiced with each other and, and things like that. Oh, that's so neat. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, that's really nice to know that because, you know, you, you hear of, like, I'm not saying this about our school, but what I'm saying is, is, like, so this is how people just open up schools and they do shitty jobs because they're not putting in the work that you guys put in behind the scenes, possibly. Well, yeah, there's there's different levels, right? We uh, we're professionals. There's there's the professionals, and then there's people that aren't professionals, right? And that's fair. People can you can kind of see that when you uh, participate in those kind of uh, places, right? You know, sometimes it's the parent. Some people are successful even if they're not like professional. But again, it's for the most part. You know, if you're a professional and you do everything the right way, um, you're going to have more longevity than than not. That's, that's absolutely very true because you're not going to be able to make it very long. You're not going to keep students if you're not doing very well. Right. And it's, right. A, it's a progression. Like I'm always learning. I'm still learning. Right. I have a ton to learn. I still make mistakes. Um, but. Well, that's very nice to hear because yeah. I'm always making mistakes. And I'm like. It's part of life. Right? Ah, what yeah. am I doing wrong? Yeah. Even in my jujitsu training. Like I've been doing it for a long time i i make mistakes every time and i'm you know just like ah, i, sh- I should have known that or you know there's just there's always something to learn yeah i heard a i heard a really good uh somebody said something and i don't remember if it was instagram or what but they were they were talking about how uh you're you're just you never stop learning the, you know this guy's uh whatever black belt and he's like you get tripped up and yes if you go against someone under you you will possibly get tapped and that's okay because uh the way he was saying it was is that you're you're not losing you're learning and you know that happens to all of us still today like the yeah. the underbelts can get you from time to time oh, yeah. you feel that same way oh yeah like i've, I've See, been that's caught it. by underbelts before and you know it's it's frustrating like oh man you know but again it's you got to look at it in a different way you have to you can't let it 
piss you off. Uh, it's gonna happen. So, you know, they're gonna you're gonna make a mistake. They're gonna catch you on it, or th- maybe they're <coughs> excuse me. They got they they you know they just they were on and they caught you and you're off and that's just part of learning and it's you know you have to view it as a learning uh, a l- something to learn from instead of you know you know being pissed about it or, or down on yourself or. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you a thousand percent. I think that's so important for people to hear is that like when you get into those positions and those things happen, you got to just absorb it, look at it. And it's like, it, it, what do we call it? Sh- shedding the ego. Right. Right. That ego is making you feel this way about it. But if you get rid of the ego, you can look at it, hopefully right. with clearer eyes and then work on that mistake you made that got you into that position because that's something you've always told me yep. is that I, what happened when I did that? Well, you must've done it wrong in order for them to get to this point. Yep. So you just need to stop doing that wrong. Yeah. You know, and it sounds so simple, but it sometimes it eats at the, our, our, our brains. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Just, we overthink a lot of things and then, you know, it's just that kind of shuts you down in, 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 in a way. So you, uh, just gotta keep going. Like it's just, it's you're you're not gonna get to a point where you're just like, all right, I'm just, I'm at my, I know everything now, and I'm just gonna stay at that. Like, there's levels to to all of that in training. There's levels to black belts. There's level to you know to all of it. So, you know, you're just just going with an open mind, and you're you know, don't, don't have too many expectations of of what you want to be or where you think you should be. Just go and just. Have fun. I know it's just say. have fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. At the end of the day, if you're not looking to be a super athlete, just yeah. have fun with it. You Even know, if you are trying to be a super athlete, you still gotta you gotta make, you gotta have fun. You gotta have fun because you know I did that. I was I was the athlete at the time when it wasn't fun. Okay. It wasn't fun competing. Well, see, when I when you say that, I I don't I don't know if that's supposed to be fun, right? Because it's it, it's it right. It depends on the level, right? Yeah. So it it was it was a job. Yeah, and it was stressful, and it wasn't fun because of the the pressure on you, depending on where you were. Like it was just, it was, you know, you're you're on you're hard on yourself, and you have to be, and it hurts, and you're training hard, and it's just, it's not really fun. Mm-hmm. Um, not like a casual type of fun, you know what I mean? It was like that's your job, and if you fuck up, then you lose half your paycheck, or or you yeah, don't, you know. So it's, um, if that's all that you have at that time don't have like a backup yeah so when so all of this going on and 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 you're you're trying this is more that was more like a job and now you're having more fun right Right. and what what are your like eating habits and stuff like that today are they uh, like are you on any special diet or anything was what are you doing today yes yes Yes, you're just special diet of uh, eating whatever I want, whatever you want. Yeah. OK, well, everybody's got like diets or keto and, you know, I, I, I've got all kinds of issues. So mine's yeah. very uh, regimented because of that. So I don't know. It seems to be a thing everybody's talking about today. Diets yeah, I mean, and what they're eating. Uh, uh, I'm in the process. I'm trying to bulk up. right? I want to get you OK, know, get, put on a bunch of weight because I don't have to cut weight anymore. Right, so now I just want to lift more now for vanity, oh, because I want to look good on the beach or something like that, you know. Nice my shirt off, so. Um, but I also want it to be. It's, I still got to be functional, right? So, right, you know, um, because I'm still training, I'm still competing in jujitsu a little bit, right? So I still want to be able to be strong in in the right areas. So, um, I'm not eating crap. I shouldn't say that, right? I'm not eating everything. Like I can eat everything, anything I want. But, but I'm not like eating cake every day. Okay. Right? So I'm still eating healthy. I'm still eating my proteins and things like that. But I'm not like counting calories or uh, I'm not. You know, I thought about maybe it's you know one point doing like uh, what's the the meat only diet? What's yeah that? yeah carnivore diet? Carnivore. I thought yeah, about yeah. doing that. that and, actually, you know. uh, for uh, fun, uh, Rogan started that January first, and whoever wanted to join him could join the carnivore diet. No. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. It's not on my wheel, not in my wheelhouse, but I hear yeah. it does great things for a lot of people. But that's why I'm asking this question, because there's so many things going on out there. And sometimes we just have to do what's best for us. So if you're trying to bulk up, what is your what is your everyday weight? Like I, I can barely break 150. I've been trying to forever. Do you have any pointers for someone like me trying to bulk up? Um, I'm not the best. I wouldn't. 
want to be comfortable giving you advice because I know what I'm supposed to do, but I don't exactly do it myself. Okay. Like I should be, right? Yeah, so, yeah, I, you yeah. know, I, I've talked to a lot of people, like strength coaches and stuff like that, and you just got to eat a lot of calories. It's a lot of calories. Like, yeah, you got a ridiculous amount of calories, like, you know, whatever. 2,000 is like your your base of like kind of like whatever. That's what everybody keeps telling coming, me, yes. But, uh, you got to eat 4,000 yeah. calories a day. Or, okay. You know, you know, and that that is so hard to do if you really – count out your calories yeah like, it's really difficult it's like you don't you don't like eating at some point it's just eating's not fun because you just you you have to eat all these calories and it's just not enjoyable right right so um and you can't just eat cake and ice cream to no get those calories because it's not going to do you any good no, you got to actually eat food that's going to do something right. for you yeah so it's it's hard it's it's you got to put a lot of effort into it there's a lot of if you're gonna unless you're really wealthy and you just pay for everything or buy stuff but again that's still not healthy. Right. So you got to make, you got to prep, and you got to do all these things that uh, it's time consuming. I, um, fi- I find that prepping meals, it really tends to keep you in order. Right. So I do that a lot for myself. I prep my stuff, and I do stuff like that, but my calorie intake is nowhere near 4,000. Yeah, so. me either. And I'm trying to get into the prepping thing more, which reminds me tonight I should do some, do some, <laughs> do prepping, some prepping for the week. Yeah. So when you, so besides food and all this other stuff, when you are in, in the Olympics, you're doing your thing, you're training for it, you're fighting, you're training for fighting. How many times have you either gone up to do judo or gone into the ring and you felt a hundred percent? I feel like there's a lot of miscommunication that a lot of the fans out there have that. They always think that the fighter feels 100%. And from what I've heard and known, you guys are, like, pushing maybe 75 80% almost all the time. Yeah. Like, feeling, like, how did you feel a yeah. lot of the times? Um, you rarely go into an event. We'll just say fighting, for example, because that was the more extreme of, mm-hmm. of, of Yeah, it's anything. very extreme. Um. So, yeah, let's say you have a fight, you're getting ready for a fight. You have, like, an 8 to 12-week training camp that you get ready for the fight. So what do you do for that training for the 8 to 12 weeks? Well, I'm assuming you're sparring. You fight. You fight. <laughs> so you're getting your ass kicked or kicking ass or trying to kick ass for those 8 to 12 weeks. So you're banged up, right? Okay. So it's, it's you're, I mean, obviously you're not, like, it's not like a fight fight. You're not going 100%. I mean, you are, I should say, but it's not, like, not closest thing to a fight that you can do but the simple but the fact is is that even training for the fight you're still beating yourself up a little bit right you're actually you know in all of the training whether whatever the sports is usually you're training harder in training than well you you want the fight to be easy right right so that's just your idea right so you want to train so hard to be in such good shape that the fight is easy or the match is easy so you're yeah it's it's intense like you're just you're you're getting beat up. They're coming at you. You've done shark bait before, right? Yeah. Right? So yeah, you're, yeah, yeah. You're. It's just not fun because you're just getting your ass kicked for so many weeks, and it's hard, and it's it's mental, mentally grinding, and physically grinding, emotionally grinding. Um, but the idea is to peak at the right time. Oh, right? okay. So you you want to you know you're you're breaking yourself down. You're learning this. You're getting you know uh, more in shape as you get closer to the event and right. if you time everything right and if you have the good coach quality coaches and all that is you're going to peak at the right time the week of the fight so you're going to be feel great once you do that cuz you you know you obviously don't go hard all the way up to the fight you said the the, per, the two or three weeks but clo- two weeks maybe week and a half near the fight you you slow everything down and you build yourself up regain your strength and that's just oh, okay. all the hard training's done at that point. Oh, really? And it's just about reco- okay. recovery and getting ready to go for fight day. But even at the end of that, say week and a half, you're still not a hundred percent when you walk in the octagon. Well, it depends. Yeah, like, you know, it depends on how. Maybe you got injured through training. Maybe you're fighting a, a sprained knee, or um, you know, I, I've I've gotten you know five four weeks before my match, I got kicked in the eye here, and I got like six stitches. Um, so I had to deal with that. So now you can't spar for a couple of weeks because you got six stitches in your eyebrow. Um, leading up to that happened when I title fight against Lima, I ducked into someone throwing a head kick accident and his knee caught me. You know, so you know, so that kind of changes your how you're training and what you can do. And you know, I've had you know 
twisted ankles and bones. And I remember I got knocked unconscious. I got knocked out two weeks before uh, my first tournament in Bellator. You got knocked out training? Yeah. Jesus first time I've been Christ. knocked out. But we were just sparring. Caught me. I was a lefty. He was a lefty. And he just threw a straight and just caught me right in the chin. And I went face face first into the into the floor. I wasn't out out, but I was out. Like I didn't yeah. like go to fall asleep and then wake up. But I was like, you know, you were just collapsed. You're, yeah, and yeah. He, 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 he stopped your clock. <laughs> got up and then I was like, you know, at that you got you got I got a concussion, right? Oh, this, Jesus. Is, this is two weeks before a, a, my fight. Um, so for those two weeks, I couldn't do anything because I had a concussion. Um, so. So what technically ha- I wasn't probably should have fought. Oh, okay. I was gonna say, like, right. once you say that word concussion, I'm, yeah. I was like, is the fight over at that point? Well, um No. No. I mean it was a hundred thousand dollar tournament, so I was like, yeah. Well, that was the one that you won. Uh was that was it? the one that I won, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My, yeah. my first one a lightweight. So this is the first time I also drop into a lightweight, which I had never I had cut thirty pounds for that. So there was a lot on you know, at the time I was like, This is that's that's big money, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Know, I I just try try not to get hit during the fight. Wait a minute. So when you won that, you were concussed two weeks prior. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, for the dude. first fight, because I had three fights. So yeah. Okay. The first fight. Yeah. That is insane. And thankfully, my first fight is I think I I knocked the kid out in I think early second round or first round something like that. So I didn't really didn't take any damage. Right. Um. And then my second fight a month later because you fight every four weeks. Where oh. You have, you have three fights and. Two months, something like that, right? You fight okay. in three fights, four weeks apart. Okay. And in my second fight, I also knocked the person out right away without getting any damage. So I kind of recovered by the time the last fight came oh, from my concussion. So all right. I, th- thankfully, I didn't take so any So the, the first fight after the concussion was relatively easy for you. Yes. Even though you were concussed. And yeah. then by well, the... I wasn't concussed at fight time. But at was, fight time, I, but you had a concussion. I probably shouldn't have fought... Yeah, if you know, if a doctor would would advise that would have, have advised against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Of course, I'm not course. saying to do that, people. Like, obviously, listen no, to no, no, no. Doctors. We're it's, not saying know. to do anything. Um, I'm, I'm just that, that it, was my choice, and I was like, you know, at the time, I was, I felt good enough to fight at fight time. Oh wow, so I was probably insane. fine. I was probably fine. You're right, but well, okay. So here's a better question: When you get a concussion. What does the doctor normally say? Like depends on how bad it is. Depends on it. Just depends on how bad right. it is. Like, okay. I wasn't like throwing up, concussed. Like that's like bad. Like okay, you know, I, was, I I got rocked. I got rocked pretty good, and I had a headache and and you know for a couple of days, and I couldn't work out. Like a few days after, I tried to work out, and as soon as your heart rate gets up, you get a massive headache. E- equilibrium off a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. It was more just feeling sick. I was sick. Like, that's you know you're concussed. Oh concussion. okay so, okay. I uh, think that takes like a week to kind of get rid of, and then. You know, so by the time that that came around, I even the I, doctor I'm sure would still have advised no, don't do anything for like a month or two, right? Because obviously but, your head trauma is kind of big and and what what year was this? 2012. 2012. Yeah. So everything's a little bit different back then too. No, it was the same. No, it was the same as yeah. it is today. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they would have said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. I, I I didn't. I felt. I feel like as. I don't know. The last couple of years have gone on. Restrictions have gotten tighter. Everything has gotten a little bit more. Well, yeah, for like head trauma, yeah. Obviously, you yeah. don't want to mess around with head trauma. Like that's that's a big deal, right? So I'm not making light of it and stuff. But again, no, um, no, no. Of course, for my not. personal case, like that's what I decided to do. Um, and, and you came out on top, and, luckily. Right, and I mean, there was no. I didn't see a doctor, right? I didn't. Oh, okay. Right, so this is not a doctor telling you you were concussed. No, this I, was you just knowing your body, and you're like, I'm. I, I've off. been there before. Like, I, I know, oh. I know it's concussion. Like, uh, and also, I wasn't in this country, so I was okay. I was in Canada, and uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I knew. I was like, you know, it was kind of our discussion with the coaches. Like, well, see how you feel. Like, you know, it, obviously, if it, it was a really bad one, and it, you know, so some concussions take months to recover from, right? And or um, depends on how bad they are, right? Depends on what it does to you. So. Um, by the time that fight came, I was fine. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, I wasn't. I didn't have any more symptoms of that, right? I mean, maybe my head was still inside was a little, you know. But now, now, see, me being uh, the person I am, where I'm not an athlete and I do do jujitsu and I never feel a hundred percent. Like, so my thought process would be, if I got 
concussed in a sense, right? A light concussion, um, which I've had many times in my life, but it was mostly my own fault that it happened. But if I was to get in, like, even though I was feeling good, did you, my brain thought is, hey, uh, let's try as hard as we can not to get hit in the face. So like that kind of changes your game though, because like even when I'm injured in jujitsu, if my arm is bothering me, I'm doing everything I can to keep that person away from my arm, yeah. which hinders my game because I'm just concentrating on not right. getting that arm grabbed. You right. know what I mean? So right. we're, what was like, did you have those same thoughts or were you <coughs> able to let go and just let, let yourself do what you needed to do? I didn't really think about it, oh. but when you're <laughs> fighting the whole objective from day from anything, it's not to get hit in the head. So you're, you're like, so you're no matter always... what, whether head injury or not, or okay. whether you think you, you have to not, I shouldn't say head injury. It wasn't a head injury. So, um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, your head, your, your, your brain, you know, getting hit may, may have, might have nothing, might have, might have made it, might, sorry, something probably wouldn't have happened. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe nothing would have happened. Um, but from my understanding is, you know. If you are kind of like if you have that kind of trauma, like it's easier to get knocked out again if you're not right. Well, that's what again. I'm saying. Right. Like even though it wasn't that bad and you were feeling good by that fight, yeah. It like my my first thought is even though I've been training not to get hit in the face, I'm gonna do a little bit extra to not get hit in the face because I have this feeling like if it was to happen again, it could happen again. Right. So I, you want to make sure that it doesn't happen, right? Right. I wasn't thinking that. Oh, because okay. Because you started thinking that, and then that throws you off because you're, you're going you're gonna to screw up. Okay. You can't be like, okay, just like, only focus on that. Like, That's what I do, and I Because you're, you're going to go opposite of what you're trying to do. All right. right? So you just kind of just you just do what you normally do, right? It depends on, obviously, everything's a little bit different on what your injury is or something like that, and but there was nothing that was just – you know, if in that kind of situation where luckily for me, like I got that tunnel vision where everything was just kind of like slowed down and it just kind of like, so you just, you got, just in, the got in the zone and the zone, zone and took over. Boom. I, I caught the kid with a nice right hand, knocked him out. And that is so awesome. That's so cool, man. That is just so, like, cause like that's something I can't do. If I'm injured, that's all I'm thinking about is that injury. Well, it depends on so, it depends different than training or if you're doing a if you're doing a tournament. Yeah, right. So you're you're, it's it's different. You have a different mental state that you're going to be in, right? Right. When I'm training, I don't. I'm not in that mental state of of kind of like in the zone or whatnot. Rarely, unless you know your intensity or depending on like if you're, you know, it, it has to be a certain kind of dynamic of 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 training like just kind of rolling around and you're just you know having fun so yeah again there's there's a different there's adrenaline's not really going to be there and that's a that's a huge thing that hides a lot of pain sometimes and okay know, changes things and that's why i was saying like i just feel like uh, uh you know if you're just having fun and just doing it it's still if you're if you're thinking about that injury then it's still gonna hinder your game and keep you from doing things. So it's, it's easier. It's, it's better. I think for me, if I was just to just let go of that and just do what I do. And when that opportunity, like if they grab the arm that I'm worried about that day, then that's when I need to react to the arm. Right. Don't react to the arm before the arm is grabbed. Something like it's that. It's a fine line. Like, yeah. Again, see, right? so it's, it's, you know, if sometimes that, if you I'm, have an injury, sometimes that helps you work on something else because you're like yeah. you're you're gonna baby that arm and you're not gonna use it. So that's gonna help you. You know, th there's a lot of stories with jujitsu where someone gets hurt uh, and they can't use that certain body part or something, so they had to change their game and and develop something else. I think it's how Gordo oh, okay. developed. Uh, uh, I think it was a half guard. He, right. I think you're correct. Right? Yes. He, I think I for his, his knee or his leg or something. He had an injury, if I understand. I, I, I could be wrong, so I, I'm sorry, Professor. Uh, <laughs> but uh, from my understanding is that's how he kind of um, developed his half guard system was because of an injury. Okay, if that's I, a nice way of thinking about it because I've never right. thought about that either. I always, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm still fresh anyways as far as I'm concerned, and I'm still having my deer in headlight moments. So I'm yeah. looking for, and, and I guess I should do that when I'm, 
injured or feeling a certain way because, you know, if I get too injured, I'm out of work, which is nothing that can happen today, right. which is why I get so worried about the injuries. But at the same time, it should change my game. It, it does help, right? I mean, yeah, so, yeah so, I mean, your hands hurt, you can't grab it. Well, then you got you to gotta use like, your legs more or, or, your, or vice versa or something like that. So it gives you an opportunity to try things differently that you wouldn't normally do. And it kind of sometimes it'll open up your, you know, you, you'll see paths and, and avenues that you didn't recognize before. Maybe that works into your specific game now. And you're like, oh, wow. Well, or maybe I like to do this now. That's cool. And, you know, so it's just, again, it's, it's what we said earlier. It's about always learning and, you know, just having fun with it and just try things. Like Try things. Yeah, who, just try it out. Know, who cares if they tap you, submit you, like, Right, you don't need to be like, oh, I was injured. That's why you got me. Just be like, I oh, just well. Also, try, try you things. don't know until you try, right? Right. Just so, you know, like anything we do in life today, yeah, anything. Exactly. Yeah. So, so let's go. Let's go back to like so. 2016, uh, you open up your own school. Yep. And 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 seven years ago yesterday. Oh my God, was it? Well, that's when we signed the lease. That's yeah. when you signed the lease seven years ago. Yep. Wow, that's incredible. That's so cool, dude, because yeah. I've been going there since you opened the doors. Yeah. Um, and it's I, I love seeing the, the group of people growing and you got more and more students showing up, which is f- fantastic. Um, and, and how has that been for, like for you, you know, uh, like opening up your own school, get, getting the getting the people in there? You know, how, how has that been going for you, like in the beginning and to where you are today? How, yeah. How was it? Um, so it's been a learning process, right? Mm-hmm. So I've, I'm still learning, like I said earlier, and still making mistakes now and again. Um, but uh, you know, it's it, it's awesome. I mean, it, it's a very it's a cool job. It's something that I've you know, obviously wanted to do my entire life. It's much easier than getting punched in the face for a living. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes you're working with like uh, little kids and stuff, and that can be a different kind of, you know. Sometimes I'd rather get punched in the face than working than with work the little kids. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, uh, but ki- everyone has there's challenges to everything, right? It, yes. Uh, uh, working with the kids is awesome. I love I love I love our team. I love the kids. Um, it's just a different kind of. Uh, it's different, right? It, it's it's um, you got to be more patient. You got to be more. Uh, um, um, nicer is the the wrong word, but you, yeah, um, understanding, understanding. Yeah, you know, that's a better way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but uh, again, it, it's cool. Like I, I, I enjoy it. Um, and it just brings a different, you know, it's something different almost all the time. And you know, COVID kind of put a damper on things a little bit. Um, yeah, to the whole world. Yeah, <laughs> uh, still is, but still is. Uh, yeah, we were fortunate enough that it was only a short amount of time that we had to stay closed. Yes, um, but we still often we were still doing online stuff, so we weren't completely closed. But um, I think building back up, I think you know we we built back up since then what we maybe we had lost. Oh, um, good. And our, I mean, my school luckily right now is is doing really well. We're we're, we're crushing it, and, and it's only going to get better as as, as this year uh, goes on. I know it. Now, what in in your school? What it's jujitsu, muay thai, judo. And karate, karate. So you're just still doing the karate there as well. Yep. Okay, cool. Yeah, that is awesome, man. I can't believe it's been seven years. I know. I, I just uh, it was a couple of days ago. I was like, oh wow, it's 2022. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I'm, I'm 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 hitting my seventh year with the school in Derry. Yeah. So March was like our first classes because we had to build out the school, right? So we signed the lease in January first, um, in sixteen, right? Fifteen? No, fifteen, sixteen, something like that. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, no, it's been seven years. But uh, um, yeah, then March was our first first classes. Oh, that's awesome! Yeah. That's awesome. I'm glad it's doing well. I'm glad all all the all the PMA schools are doing well. It's it's nice that you guys were capable of staying afloat during all of this. Yeah, you know, uh, I come from the vape industry, and I watched hundreds of shops go out of business, and just recently, because of all these wonderful things going on, I just lost like seven more juice companies yeah. so it's still happening today yeah. so if you like my vape shop is doing very well and right. i'm excited about that but it's like you watch everybody else you know falling out around you yeah and uh i think uh i think the way you guys uh do your school and and uh, uh the amount of um it's not effort i'm looking for like uh 
you you guys just have a th- every, it's just enjoyable you have an inviting um like what's the word i'm looking for it's like it's it's not a friendship it's more it's like a family mm-hmm. like you feel like a part of a family like right. when i go to your school i feel like i'm part of your family when i go to tim's school i feel like i'm part of another family but all of the families are together and right. sometimes we mix and mingle yeah. you know and it's just it's just an, an enjoyable thing and i'm just so grateful that you know um i got introduced to all of you the yeah. people that introduced me to you are no longer there but that's okay right Cause, you know because i i fell in love with all of you guys and uh it's just it's been an amazing seven years for me um, to work with all of you because I was, you know, still drinking when I joined you guys. I was still doing a lot of stupid shit. And with, you know, getting sober and taking care of myself, it was not only my own family, but all of you who really showed me that there was more to this than just being a drunk and not going on. So, I have all of you, plus, especially you, Rick. I've worked a lot with you. Um, and you really have kept me on the right track because as long as I keep myself going to those mats and working with all of you, I just feel like I'm in a better place no matter what happens in my life today. You know, And I, I really wanted to thank you for all of those things. Absolutely. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. I mean... It's an amazing, amazing thing you guys are doing. You know, you're bringing people together and, you know, you're going to have people that aren't going to make it, that are going to make it. You're going to see all kinds. And that's amazing. That's amazing. You're touching people's lives. You're changing people's lives. I've seen people that go to all of the schools, big guys, not having a good time on those mats as white belts. And then they're turning blue and they've lost 150 pounds. You know what I mean? Just incredible, incredible things I think all of you are doing. So I am super grateful for you. I'm really glad. Um, Was there anything else you wanted to touch on today? Um, Just no, go back on on your point. You were just saying it. Yeah. We have a a great family atmosphere, right? And especially with jiu-jitsu. Jiu-jitsu is a little bit different than some of the other martial arts. You know, jiu-jitsu, everyone's very, very friendly and, um, it's just that that kind of that Brazilian culture that we that we have, especially Professor Lucas, uh, yes, uh, who's, who's an amazing instructor and, and a great person. Um, and with Tim and the entire uh, Jiu Jitsu family that we have is Professor Raphael and all that. So it's very inviting. Everyone's very nice. Um, and again, it does. I think Professor Raphael's motto or logo that, or something that, saying that he has on his his shirts is changing martial. Changing lives through martial arts. Right? Yes. So that's exactly what we do, and and uh, and it's amazing. Like I've I've had that same experience with I've had students lose a ton of weight and stuff like that, and made their lives better, and they're they're healthier and they're happier because of what we can do and what we can offer. And, and th- there's nothing better than that. I think is, no. is when you can change someone's and make their life better just by doing what what we love to do. Just have fun and, and enjoy it. And, and if I can provide that opportunity or that atmosphere that place where someone can do that that's that's there's nothing more rewarding than that that's so awesome that's so awesome bro i i just it's just i just can't get over it this has been absolutely amazing um i really appreciate you coming over here and doing this Uh, it's been a long time coming right right yeah yeah we've been working on it we've been working on it what i found out about this is that getting schedules to coincide most difficult part of all of this Absolutely. Is what I found out. Yeah, I was like, "Oh no, this is gonna be easy." I, I no, it should be easy, but yeah, yeah it's, it's, we're all busy. Yeah, COVID kept, kicked us down a little bit, and as we're trying to get back to our regular lives, I feel like everything's gotten even a little bit more busy. Yeah, so this time of year is very busy as well. But another reason why too, I was like, you know what, I need to. We we've been talking about this. I have a lot of changes that I'm trying to do. I'm not going to say resolutions, but things that I've. Oh, is that okay? Okay. Yeah, let's not, it's not, this is not a resolution, so but. You're not uh, doing a resolution. You're doing goals? Goals. Things I want to start the year off strong. I want to yeah. get, get the things done that I should be doing or should have done um, and more so. So I'm like, you know, this is a great opportunity to get this out of the way. Um, not out of the, you know what I mean? No, 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 that's <laughs> fine. Like, yeah, yeah, just be, get them out of the way. Be done, be done with, with you. you. Um, but, you know, be like, we've been talking about it. Let's get it done. 
Um, and you know, just kind of kind of build off that, just get get my shit done that I need to do, and 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 that's kind of you know. Yeah, that's the same thing I'm doing. I I gave up on resolutions about five years ago, if yeah. not a little bit longer, and I just set goals yeah. to hopefully get to the goal I want to be at at X amount of time. Right. And I feel like that's easier. It's just like my jujitsu. I'm I'm working on little bits at a time, and eventually it'll all get put together and make one long, you know, one move right. from beginning to end. So I just. I've just always been against uh, New Year's resolutions. I think they're too heavy. They're short too lived. much. Yeah. I yeah. mean, most people don't make it out of the first week. Yeah. You know, I saw yeah. I saw a meme, and memes are my favorite, but the meme was, oh, congratulations to everybody who made a New Year's resolution and pushed it off till Monday. Right. What? The, that, so it's like I, I was talking about it uh, probably a couple of weeks ago is setting goals because I feel like if you set goals that are accomplishable, nothing like There's a too timeline crazy. On it. If you put a timeline, timeline, on it. right? But you want to be able to reach the goal as right. well. You don't want to make a goal that's unreachable because then right. that's discouraging. But you want that one goal that you accomplish in that a specific amount of time to lead up to the next goal. Yeah, it needs to be achievable, like small goals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm so glad you feel the same way because I was like. I'm like, no, we need to stop this resolution thing. It's crazy. It's a great way for the gyms to make money, but it's no way to live life. Well, for the first month. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, they make money all year because well, yeah. they sign up the year contract. Right. Right. right? You right. go in there, you sign up for the year. I'm doing this. Three weeks into it, you're like, yeah. I'm done, but you're still paying the gym. Right. So they made their money. They're oh, yeah. happy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I agree with you. I think goals are definitely a better solution to reaching a, a, jo- a bigger goal at the end. Yeah, and especially I think the last couple of years that we've all been g- going through, I think, you know, this year, at least for me, it's I know it's going to be my best year um, up to this point. So I'm 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 making sure of it. You know, I'm not going to just gonna be like, oh, I hope so, but I'm going to make sure of it. Yeah. Right? And, you know, uh, yes, the world is a crazy place right now, but, again, it's, you know, I'm lucky to have my school in New Hampshire and kind of be where I'm at, and you live up, up here too, and, and, you know, so, but it's, I think a lot of it's just mindset. Just put your head down and just go forward. Yeah. You got to sometimes. You got to. You just got to do it. Just yep. got to do it. That's called discipline. Yep. You got to have discipline. Yep. Discipline, set goals, and that's going to make you reach what you want to acquire. Yep. I really do believe that. And I just, I, I, I'm so happy that I was introduced to Professional Martial Arts Academy in general because you guys are an extension of my family. I don't think I can say that enough. I, I, like I said, I'm coming into my seventh year with all of you. And it's, it was literally the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. You know, I, besides quitting drinking. That was, yeah. probably, that was probably top number one. But I was doing jujitsu while I was still drinking. And it right. was very, very difficult then. Sure. It didn't get much easier. But my brain could capture more once I got that shit out of my life. Right. So, but you probably it, feel better and I, overall, of course, well. yeah. of course I feel better. It's a poison. Yeah. It doesn't do anything that positive, even though people are trying to say it does. You can microdose. There's all kinds of studies on doing stuff with alcohol now, which I find to be hilarious. But if it wasn't for quitting, jo- joining you, quitting and turning my life around, I, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. And I have all of you to thank for that. I really, really do. You know, so. Um, well, we're happy to have you. Dude. Yeah. All right. Well, here's to another wonderful year. I think 2022. I don't know how great it's going to be, but I know. It's going to be I, awesome. I feel like it's going to be way better than 2021. They can only get increasingly better. They're not going to be extra. Ne- uh, what's the word? I'm like, bigger. They're yeah. not going to be the biggest, but. It, hey, if this year is a little bit better than last year, then it isn't that better. It is. Right? It depends on how you look at it. Some people, you know, as is the, club, is the glass half full or half empty. So right, right. It's, it's, you know? It depends on your own outlook. I used to be a cla- glass half empty guy. I'm trying to look at it as, as it's half full now. Absolutely. It's a, better way, to, it's a better way to live. Right? Yeah. All right, Rick. Thank you so much for doing this. Um do you having me. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll put everything in the description, and I'll flash yeah. stuff at the end of the screen. And again, man, thank you so much for doing this. Absolutely, thanks it's for having an me. Absolute pleasure. All right, everybody, that is Rick Genghis Hahn.
And welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed doing it. It was so much fun. Um, I hope me being a fan uh, didn't get in the way too much of uh, everything that I was trying to do, um, but I couldn't help it. Uh, I think, you know, like I said earlier, when this is my this was my first one that wasn't somebody that I talked to every week, twice a week. You know, Tyler comes on the podcast. It's fun. We have conversations all week, every week, and it's easy. But Rick is somebody that I look up to. He's somebody I've been working with for seven years, and I've never had such an in-depth conversation with him. So I'm just hoping that I do better next time. He wants to come back on. He had a lot of fun. There was a few things that we talked about after the podcast that I was like, oh, man, should we go fire up those mics again? And he said, you know what? I'm going to make time to come back and do this again. So we're going to work on that. Um, I've got some other things set up for 2022 that I'm also very excited for. Um, and uh, I'm just, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to do this. I wanted to do things like this. this I, I mean, at the end of the day, this is a dream job for me. So if I can turn it into an actual job, then I mean, what what's better than that, right? Um, so we're all trying to find, uh, our jobs that are not jobs, you know, there's something we love doing. And I'm not saying I don't love the vape gallery that I poured my heart and soul into that, into that shop. Uh, but I mean, what's better than sitting around and having conversations with people? I can't think of anything better. So I'm super excited. I hope you all enjoyed that. There's more to come. Uh, in this new year. Um, but for today, that's the podcast. And um, I just want to thank you again, as always. Thank you for subscribing, um, sharing, rating, reviewing, all that you do. Um, it really does keep me coming back here week after week. So thank you. I, I, I just can't say this enough. It's, it's so um, mind-blowing. All of this is mind-blowing, all right? So I'm going to keep doing my best, and you just keep coming back week after week and uh, share, rate, and review, all right? If you are new to the podcast, remember to subscribe. It's the most important thing you can do. It means nothing to you and everything to me. If you want to do more, set the alarm so you know when all the new podcasts upload. Share, rate, review. Of course, give thumbs up for the videos and comments that all helps the podcast grow and i need your help to be doing that if you want to get more involved with the podcast talking with topher at gmail.com that's right you want a chance to win some free slowdown merch put slowdown in the subject line put your story or somebody else's story you think needs to be heard maybe you got questions maybe you need advice send that on over uh, to T A L K I N with Topher at gmail.com. That's talking with Topher at gmail.com. I pick it out. I put you on the podcast. You get the opportunity to win some free slowdown merch. Um, and then, of course, if you want to follow me on social media Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook, I'm on there every week, almost all week, giving you some extra content. And again, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and Facebook. I just hope everybody enjoys their Thursday. All right. Have a great Thursday. Have an enjoyable rest of your weekend. And as always, I will talk to you later. I'll talk to you later.